Hello, and welcome back to the Java series of videos. In this video, we'll discuss more advanced aspects of object-oriented programming, focusing on inheritance and abstract classes. Inheritance is a means through which you can extend an existing class with a new class and provide new, fun new features. For example, we could take our date class from the previous video and extend it to hold time information as well. To do so, we should place it in the same package, i.e. the same folder. Not only do they have similar functionality, but you won't have to manually import the date class for the date time class. Such an object will have all the functionality that the date class has, i.e. it inherits date functionality, so we don't have to rewrite it. It will also provide time-specific functionality, chiefly hours, minutes, and seconds. We can add the corresponding restrictions to those fields similarly to what was done in the setup methods of the date class. I also want to call attention to the str to string method of the date class and date time class. Note the override on top of both of them. This indicates that this particular method is intended to override a version shown by the base class. For instance, toString can be overridden in date time because it already exists in our date class. However, we also override it in the date class and the date class doesn't extend any other class, does it? Actually, there is an object class that every other class in Java inherits from. If you write a class and you don't explicitly extend another class, it will implicitly extend the object class. The object class provides a handful of methods to override, the most common of which are equals method and the toString method. I'll go into the equals method in a later video. Our overriding the toString method is an example of runtime polymorphism, i.e. the differing of behavior based off of the data type being worked with. I say runtime because even if we assign a date time to a variable of the date type date, if we call toString on it, it will call the date time version. This is because while the variable says date, the object holds information indicating that it is a date time object, and thus that particular method gets called. Because the method to run is determined when the program is run, it is considered runtime polymorphism. There is also compile time polymorphism, meaning that the method chosen to run is determined at compile time. This can be seen through method overloading, where a class could have two or more methods of the same name as long as the parameters differ. For instance, in our date class, we could add another setMonth method that takes in a string. If the string is the name of the month, set the month, otherwise do nothing. It's also legal to hold a date time object in a date variable because a date time is a date. Vice versa, it would be illegal because a date object is not a date time object. In the previous video, I mentioned the four pillars of object-oriented programming and talked about encapsulation. In this video, I talked about inheritance and polymorphism. The final pillar is abstraction the idea of caring more about what you want to do than how you do it. Java provides two major concepts for abstraction, interfaces and abstract classes. Interfaces are more of a contract holding a series of methods that don't have a body, i.e. abstract methods. Any class that implements an interface has to provide the body. In fact, before Java 8, interfaces could not provide their own method implementation. Starting with Java 8, you would have to mark the method as default and then provide it with a body. Any method declared in an interface is implicitly public and abstract, unless marked otherwise. Any field declared in an interface is implicitly public, static, and final. Abstract classes, on the other hand, are classes that contained some abstract methods. However, in a class, methods are concrete by default so you would have to mark them as abstract, and you would have to mark the class itself as abstract. Because interfaces and abstract classes have abstract methods, you cannot instantiate either one. You would need to provide a class that implements or extends it and then call new on that class. 
if you extended an abstract class, you would either need to implement all the abstract methods held by the abstract class, or mark your existing class as abstract. Finally, you can prevent your class from being extended by marking it as final. If we were to mark our date class as final, it suddenly becomes a compile error seen on our date time class. Obviously, you cannot mark an abstract class as final because it needs to be extended before it can be used, but the final keyword is preventing that from happening. I would also say that a class can only extend one class directly, but it can implement as many interfaces as you deem fit. Thank you for watching, and in the next video, we will look at null and how Java manages errors and exceptions.